Hello, and welcome to the new webinar series with the CTOs of the ITU Journal on Future and Evolving Technologies. My name is Alessia Magliarditi from ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. It is my pleasure to open today the webinar with Mr. Naoki Tani, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of Entity Docomo Japan. We count on your support to make this webinar an interesting experience. Please submit your question via the Q&A channel. We will address them to the speaker during the Q&A session. After the talk and the Q&A, please stay online. We have something special for you. The Wisdom Corner, live life lessons. So Mr. Tani agreed to a personal chat. He will share with us some lessons learned over the years that might perhaps be useful for some of you. I'm now very pleased to give the floor to Mr. Seizo Onoe, Director of the ITU Telecommunication Standardization Bureau for his welcome remarks. Onoe-san, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, I'm very happy to join you from Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. I'm now here in, yeah, yeah, in Sharm el-Sheikh uh, to participate in the GSR uh, uh, Global Symposium for Regulators. Uh, so uh, today, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this exciting new series of ITU webinars with CTOs. Let me begin by thanking Naoki Tanisan, CTO at NTT Docomo, for taking the lead as a very first speaker in this new series. ITU highly appreciate your support. These talks from CTOs are presented by, by the ITU Journal on Future and Evolving Technologies. Our journal uh, embodies ITU's commitment to the, uh, to the public interest. It is unique in publishing papers, uh, publishing papers from world-renowned researchers at no charge to authors and readers. The inclusive character of our journal has received a warm welcome from both academia and industry. It succeed, succeed in offering comprehensive coverage of communications and networking thanks to its flourishing supporting community. Our journal welcomes research on all topics all year around, and I have no doubt that this new webinar series will inspire yet more contributions. This new series of, uh, of talks from CTOs will highlight the growing synergy between academia and industry in developing and applying new technologies. Academia and industry stimulate one another's work as partners in research and development as well as in sandbox initiatives to prove the market viability of new solutions. These CTO talks are certain to uncover new opportunities to expand this, okay, uh, this collaboration. Our first three talks will share CTO's insight on industry ambitions for 5G, 6G and as associated innovations to boost network intelligence. Today, we will learn more about NTT Docomo's uh, research and development to advance 5G, as well as the perspective for 6G to drive new improvement to our quality of life. We will hear from Deutsche Telekom on the 27th on June and GSMA on the, on the 4th of July. And we are also preparing to host talks from Ericsson and Nokia. I would like to encourage you to take advantage of that, web, uh, of that IT platform. In addition to regular issues, our journal is currently welcoming contributions to five special issues on AI, AI accessibility, AI for accessibility, 
the metaverse intelligence and technologies for future networking and con distributed systems, satellite constellations, and uh, connectivity from space, and next generation computer communications and networks. ITU Academia, uh, ITU Academia membership is another key avenue for academics to encourage, engage in ITU's work. Academia and industry are reinforcing their growing uh, collaboration by working together in ITU expert groups responsible for, responsible for uh, radio communication, standardization, and development. Contributions from academia being greater strengths to the, uh, to the work of ITU and greater impact to research uh, research to the mult mult mutual benefit of academia and industry. We also supplement our membership-driven work with open frameworks, such as IT focus groups and initiatives like uh, AI for Good and Digital Currency Global Initiative and the other uh, United for Smart C Sustainable Cities Initiative. These frameworks, as well as our open workshops, aim to give everyone the opportunity to inf influence our work. I welcome you to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anoe san, for your welcome remarks. And now I'm very pleased to give the floor to uh, Professor Iana Kilditz, the Editor-in-Chief of the ITU Journal on Future and Evolving Technologies and President and Founder of Truva United States uh, for his opening remarks. Uh, so Ian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Alessia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm currently in Istanbul, Turkey for a conference and I'm uh, very happy to start the, I think the fourth season of this webinars. Uh, our objective of the journal, as well as the webinars was and is to close the gap between the academia and the ITU world, uh, especially the industry. And so the first several uh, webinar series were based on the uh, academic speakers, uh, top-notch researchers around the world. And this season will uh, co contain the uh, leaders of the companies in the telecommunications industry. We started this uh, uh, journal back in late 2020, actually 2021, during the COVID time. And in such a short time, we published many issues. It was shown to you before. We have regular issues as well as special issues. And the special issues are organized by, again, leading researchers in this field. And if you have any suggestions for future uh, special issue topics, please let us know. Or if you have any papers for regular issues as well as special issues, Please do not hesitate to contact uh, or submit your papers or contact us for any opportunities. And we have a very fast turnaround time. And uh, as we mentioned before, it's open access journal. It's also free, uh, no uh, fees for publications, no fees for access to the journal. So I invite you to uh, go through some papers in our website and you will definitely enjoy them and let us know your feedback. Again, thank you. And I also thank to a uh, speaker, uh, the, uh, uh, the CTO and uh, uh, of the entity Dokoma, uh, Dr. Naoki Tani for the presentation today. Uh, regards from Istanbul, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Iana, for this nice introduction of the IT Journal. And now, very pleased to give the floor to Dr. Bilal Jamusi, the Chief of ITUT Study Groups, 
and uh, he will introduce the uh, the speaker and then we'll moderate the Q&A session. Bilal, the floor is yours and thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alessia. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker, uh, Naoki Tanisan, the Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of NTT Docomo Japan. Uh, Naoki Tanisan has been leading the R&D Innovation Division since June 2020. He is responsible for the entire R&D activities of NTT Docomo Group, including radio, mobile core, terminals, and services, and for the creation of a vision of future mobile systems and services. He's a board member of the Open Radio Access Networks Alliance and a board member of the Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance. He started his career at NTT and has continued his responsibility for network standardization, development, and deployment of 3G LTE networks and for the IoT M2M business, also after moving to NTT Docomo. He graduated from Tokyo University with a Master's of Engineering in 1989 and from Duke University with a Master's of Business Administration in 1997. Very honored and pleased to welcome uh, Tani San. The floor is, is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the kind, very, very kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Naoki Tani from NT Tokomo. Uh, so I'm sharing my slide. Okay. So thank you for attending uh, today's ITU general webinar. I'd like also uh, I, I, I would also like to thank you for uh, ITU uh, colleagues for giving me, giving me uh, this opportunity to present at today's webinar. As CTO at NT Docomo, I'm responsible for uh, entire around activity from 5G, 5G evolution beyond 5G, 6G and so on. So today I will introduce our effort for 6D, referring to the uh, current status and the de development of 5G. So move on to the next slide. Okay. So this is today's agenda. Uh, after, uh, introduction, after introduction, uh, in section two, three, and four, we'll introduce a global friend, fiber liberation, and also uh, provision in the 6G era. So first of all, introduction. Uh, this slide shows a very quick introduction of NT Docomo. As uh, among the entity group, NT Docomo is responsible for integrated ICT business and, assume for, and currently assume for 42% of the total subscribe market as a mobile network operator, as shown in the right side of this uh, slide. Next slide. Uh, the following slide is an um, um, overview of the entity Docomo's uh, mid-term strategy with the brand slogan, changing world with you, as shown in the uh, up, 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 upper side of this slide, changing world with you. And uh, this is the brand slogan. Entity Docomo is responsible for three business enterprise for three businesses. First one, enterprise business. Second one, smart life business. And third one, consumer communication businesses. While supporting the expansion of these three business domain, R&D shown in the uh, bottom side has a role in driving the future for the 6D era. Now, under these circumstances, under, now under these circumstances, 
what is the goal of R&D at the engine.com group? We're pursuing R&D to realize a well-being society with the evolution of network technology and the creation of new lifestyles at two wheels. In this context, today, I will focus on the evolution of 5G and R&D for the coming 6G era. So for the first and second section, 5G evolution. This slide shows our effort toward 5G evolution. With regard to 5G, we are seeing a steady increase in the number of business that use this technology. But we must also make efforts to increase the value we provide to our customers and partners in order to meet uh, various diverse needs and create more value. We're conducting R&D to make 5G's capabilities of high speed, low latency, and high capacity more flexible and easier to use. For example, we are introducing network slicing. Okay. Uh, for example, we are uh, introducing we are introducing network slicing and uh, advancing the sophistication of MEC uh, multi access edge computing uh, capability, which is shown in the right side of this slide, to meet diverse needs, expanding and also expanding virtualization already in place in the core network to include uh, the radio access network. Also building a mechanism to control the entire network end to end and developing technology to make it easier to utilize higher frequency, including millimeter wave. Through these R&D efforts, the uh, capabilities of 5G will be further expanded, which will lead to the realization of 6G. Today, I'd like to introduce some of uh, these te technical topics. First, NFV, virtualization. Second, ORAN, OPRAN. Third, E2EO, end-to-end -end orchestrator. So first, virtualization. Virtualization is, uh, some of you may be aware, virtualization is a, a technology utilized to deliver systems with software on top of general purpose hardware. Traditionally, telecommunication, net telecommunication networks have required high speed, high capacity, and communication specific processing. So uh, specialized, specialized or uh, dedicated or yeah, purpose build hardware equipment has been utilized. With the advancement of technology, it has become possible to utilize general purpose hardware. Starting in 20, 2016, uh, 2016, yes, uh, almost seven years ago, uh, Docomo has prog uh, progressively moved to virtualizing its core network with more than 80% already virtualized in the core network. This technology is also expected to be applied to radio access networks in the future and virtualization for its implementation is currently underway globally. In addition, in radio networks, ORAN, OPRAN, which can combine devices and software from a variety of vendors is being studied. In the past, in the past this radio access network 
how to be built with devices, equipment from the same vendor, and which, limit, which, limited, which has limited the provision of capabilities. Telecom networks uh, are expected to evolve as uh, the basis for all industry in the future. So an open run that can meet diverse needs is essential. And in addition to creating standards that embody open run, we are building an ecosystem with our partners to accelerate implementation. So the second topic, open run. Open run initiative at the NG Dogomo is shown in this slide. In uh, 20, 18, five years ago, five years ago, Energy Docomo founded the Oran Alliance as one of its founders. And also, uh, as introduced, introduced already, I am currently the, uh, one of the board member of Oran Alliance. And Docomo has been contribu has contributed to the standardization effort. And two years later, Uh, Docomo launched Open RAM based 5G. As a further evolution of Open RAM, Docomo launched the, the 5G Open RAM ecosystem in 2021 to implement RAM virtualization and also set up labs for overseas mobile operators to verify virtualized RAM in 2022, last year. This year, in order to promote these initiatives, we launched the OREX. OREX is shown in the uh, bottom part of this slide. And uh, we are promoting the global expansion of Open RAN. OREX stands for Open RAN Ecosystem Experience. And uh, Dogobo named it because uh, we want uh, people to enjoy its value. We are currently in the process of developing a virtual run in a lab, aiming to be a commercial services uh, around the end of this year. In the OREX, OREX is the purpose, uh, is the, OREX is processing the, of verifying four frameworks. This uh, OREX initiative can be accessed through this QR code shown in this slide. The virtual run consists of mainly four parts. General purpose servers, accelerators, virtualization platform, and also base station software. And we are in the we are processing to, to verifying a combination of vendors that have strengthened in their respective field. So as I mentioned before, uh, this uh, virtualized run uh, system will be commercialized soon. So the ability to achieve uh, to such a virtualized run also makes optimal, op makes optimal control of mobile communication environment more intelligent. By analyzing uh, data collected from base station, it becomes possible to automatically op optimize the operation of base station software, thereby improving customer experience, experience and reducing operating cost. As the uh, above shown virtualization technologies spread throughout the network, it becomes possible to control the entire network in a centralized manner. This is called end to E2EO, end to end orchestrator, shown in this slide. And the standardization of data, this technology is progressing, as is the development of this function. This end-to-end -end orchestrator can offer two values. First, 
we will, we will be able to provide our customers with network capabilities tailored to their use cases, such as uh, uh, those tailored to their various needs, for example, uh, low latency capabilities, higher capacity capabilities, uh, and so on, according to their demand. Second, uh, second uh, network maintenance operations will be reduced. This is called, we call it net zero touch operation. That's all the future of, that's all the future of 5G evolution. So from now on, uh, let me explain the new value creation in the 6G era. 6G is, yes. The 6G will develop as a basis for all industries in the future. In the ancient to cities, the suburbs, and uh, even on land, as well in the air and sea, uh, 6G will be the foundations for that create value and transformation. So now, uh, let me focus on our effort to 6G, yes, here. So first I'd like to talk about current global trends toward beyond 5G, 6G. Already many projects related to beyond 5G, 6G have been launched uh, domestically and internationally. And many white papers have been published Dogomo participated in projects around the world shown in this slide. The Beyond 5G 6G concepts presented in these projects are largely in the same direction, but have a wide range of topics to discuss and must address a wide variety of use cases. Further, for further standardization, Dogomo will read discussion based on concept technology proposal to narrow down the requirement and contribute to building consensus among projects on the technology priorities. ITR, yes, ITR has already agreed on a suggestion schedule for 6D in working, working party 5D. In addition, it expected that a uh, serious discussion on standardization will begin in early 2024 at 3GPP. The technical specification developed by the 3GPP will be proposed to the ITO and ITO recommendation will be completed as a standard specification for 6G. Therefore, Dokon would like to uh, yeah, propose uh, the beta uh, technologies in the 3GPP standardization activities. Yes. Docomo, NG Docomo called it our uh, initiative for the future uh, 5G evolution and 6G powered by ION. You know ION? ION, I O W N, stand for the Innovative Optical and Wireless Network an extension information and communication infrastructure that the NTT group is promoting with its global partners. To achieve this goal, R&D is underway with our partners and we will be quick to apply the results to the 5G era after confirming their effectiveness. Okay, so here's uh, our Docomo's challenge on the extreme uh, for, six, for the 6G. 5G has been studied with, uh, has, 5G has been studied with three main requirements, uh, high capacity, low latency, low latency and uh, massive connectivity. In preparation for 6G, uh, we expect these requirements to evolve further and also while at the same time significant, significantly reducing power consumption, enabling communication everywhere, and increasing reliability. 
we are developing technology to meet the requirement. In Chidokomo, we are now we are now publishing a white paper covering the technical areas and issues as well as use cases told 6GL. Since publishing the first edition three years ago, uh, it has already evolved to the five edition. Please refer to this QR code for accessing this uh, white paper. Also, concept video of the 5G evolution 6G can be accessed from the same web page QR code. So uh, if you have time, please take a look at that video and uh, enjoy it. Now, uh, here I'm showing two use cases in the 6G era. The first is telemedicine. Although medical technology has been greatly evolved, it's not possible to receive cutting edge, cutting edge medical care everywhere. And the growing gap in medical care between regions is a problem that can be solved through telemedicine. Currently, what is possible is still to support uh, for example, remote diagnosis, remote treatment, and also surgical support. But with the evolution by mobile technology, that, such as high speed and very low latencies, delay, a world in which remote robot, remote, uh, robotic surgery, telemedicine, can be realized, will be approaching. Second use cases, let me introduce the human augmentation platform. The direction for the realization of well being is to transcend, transcend any gap, beyond any gap. The concept is to go beyond human being, beyond the time, and beyond time. Time. You can see this slide. Uh, for example, uh, person, person, space, time. But by utilizing the six G, we can go beyond, between this gap. Connect the gap, exit the gap, that, and also uh, that will enable customer to achieve well-being, I believe. So, uh, for example, uh, Yeah, this slide shows a human augmentation platform, the concept of human augmentation platform. You can share five senses via 6G, for example. It means sharing your body, skills, emotions, and so on via network. The human augmentation platform aims to realize communication through transmission and understanding beyond that. It senses uh, muscles, sensations, brain waves, and so on by various methods and accum accumulated them in the human augmentation uh, platform shown in the center of this slide. Then in, uh, in this uh, platform, we make the tuning appropriate for real services and move robots, humans, arbiters, and so on, which is shown in the right side of this slide. This human augmentation platform makes it possible to transmit and share information such as body, senses, and emotions to any location via a network. Since the data acquired by this platform can be stored, it's expected to be utilized to reproduce the actions of people in the past with people in the present. 
and to pass on technologies in field that require skilled skills. So it is becoming possible to transmit and share the sense of a touch as one of the human augmentation platforms. Docomo has already de developed a prototype and conducted demonstration under the name Pale Tech. Demonstrations uh, were also shown at the Mobile World Congress Barcelona in March of this year. This uh, 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 human augmentation platform uh, will be contributing to human well-being, I believe. We will continue to advance this platform and conduct the demonstration experiment. experiment. With regard to demonstration experiment on emotion, uh, sensations, muscle, brain waves, we will support simple human activities first, and then complex human functions. We have newly started technical verification on sharing the movement of instruments and sports. And also human uh, augmentation platform with simple function can be provided over a 5G network. And we hope to commercialize it as soon as it's ready. For the 5G era, for the, no, for the 6G era, I own, I O W N various technologies will also be utilized effectively, effectively to combine more complex functions. So uh, from, uh, from this slide, uh, section show will, section four will uh, uh, showing some example of 6D rated elemental technologies. This slide shows a wireless area, wireless area that Tokomo is currently focusing on in preparation for the 6G standardization debate, which is expected to begin in 2024. At the top, at the top left is a new radio network topology. For example, in terms of coverage improvement in multi-web. Um, a multi-web, which has been in use, you, you, in use since 5G, is highly linear and difficult to, to difficult to reach. It's an effort to establish practical techn practical technology to improve this meta web coverage. Then the top right, extreme coverage extension, uh, is shown. We believe that we have create. Uh, different use cases by exploring new communication areas in the sky, sea, and space that were not supported by the existing terrestrial networks. Finally, and, second, and thirdly, uh, the use of the sub terahertz band. In order to meet the demand, the needs for faster, faster uh, speed in the 6th era, it's necessary to utilize the sub terahertz band, which can provide a wider frequency bandwidth. Another challenge is that it becomes difficult to, to receive radio waves. Therefore, we need to take advantage of coverage improvement technique, technologies, and work to increase coverage. So, uh, okay, uh, I'm showing, I'll skip, okay, I'm showing, okay. This slide shows the uh, extreme coverage, uh, yes. Docomo is studying non terrestrial networks utilizing satellites and uh, apps to develop new communication area. Using satellite and apps in the right, uh, right place to explore a new communication area in the sky and sea and space. And by linking with terrestrial networks to support seamless communications, we, we are aiming to expand the environment for people and goods and create new industries. Currently, regarding hubs, we are participating in a number of projects in Japan and also in abroad, uh, studying use cases, requirements, issues, and also conducting demonstration experiments.
for utilizing of subtle health uh, frequency band with major domestic Japanese and international partners, vendors. Our R&D department conducted joint, uh, joint demonstration experiments. We hope to use the insight gained through their effort to advance demonstration experiments with partners with various, uh, various uh, specialties, so 6D, leading to practical applications. In addition, we plan to further expand the framework for collaboration with the partners in the future and study advanced technical verification for the social implementation of 6D. Currently, Docomo is uh, collaborating with these one, two, three, four, six, seven uh, partners, and uh, we are we have. Um, uh, Yes. This, this uh, verification has started, trial started last year jointly uh, with these vendors. Yes. And uh, uh, we uh, are working with these vendors by collaborating uh, or, or deciding which part. Uh, each vendor uh, is involved in the experiment of the, yeah, it, it depends on the frequency. So uh, finally, uh, the history uh, leading up to the practical, practical use case, use, use, practical use of 5G uh, and the anticipated timeline for the practical use of 6D will be described in, the, in this slide. Comparing initial concept develop, development, white paper preparation, and implementation of demonstration uh, equipment, 6D is, be, is being considered globally on a schedule two to three years earlier than 5D. Docomo will also begin demonstration tests at the end of. Uh, Yes, Dogomo, Dogomo has also uh, started demonstrating the test uh, at, the, at, at the end of next year, uh, last year. In addition, the Osaka Kansai uh, Expo, which will be held in 2025 in Japan. Uh, at this expo, Dogomo would like to introduce Play 6G or Play Ion, IOWN technologies use cases and demonstrations. Okay. So, uh, so that's all for my presentations. As I mentioned, changing world with you is our company's brand slogan. Uh, as we move into the sixth year, changing with our partners and change, changing with the partners. Let's work with changing partners. Yes, uh, changing your partners and every industry, let's work uh, together to break new ground. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, that's all. Thank you very much, um, uh, Tani-san, for a very clear and thorough presentation of, uh, on 5G to 6G. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for some questions and answer. Uh, so we have the Q&A button on the Zoom. I invite you to type your questions and uh, we'll invite uh, Tani-san to uh, answer them. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to type them. So perhaps as you're preparing some questions, I have a question for you, Tanisan, in terms of the, um, the 5G um, process and, uh, and the requirements. How many of those um, 5G requirements 
uh, are moving to 6G. Maybe not all of them were implemented in the previous release. Uh, are some of them moving to 6G from 5G? Okay, thank you very much for uh, your questions. As I mentioned, in the 5G, we, we uh, or ITU standardization defined three, mainly three requirements. And all three requirements, some of them are already deployed and some of them are being developed and will be developed in your future. For the 6G, all uh, requirement which is defined in 5G era uh, should include, cover everything for the 6G era. And in addition, the, uh, as I mentioned, in addition, the uh, uh, three requirements defined 5G, defined as a 5G requirement, 6D have to be more, uh, more, more have, have, 6D have more capabilities as shown in, uh, in, the, in the previous slide, because I believe, well, we believe the 6D will be the uh, very fundamental uh, platforms for the every all industries. Yeah. So right. that's my thought. It's clear. Okay. Thank very clear. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other questions on the Q and A. Uh, so I'd like to invite uh, Alessia. Oh, I see one um, from Hisham. Uh, he says, "Why do we need 6G if we can add the required features to?" Uh, beyond 5G or 5G advanced. So the question is, uh, if if things can be done in beyond 5G or 5G advanced, is 6G needed? Maybe you can uh, clarify this, Tanisan. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your uh, question. The question is, uh, yes, yes, yes. Why we need 6D if we can add the required features to be on 5G or 5G uh, advanced. So, uh, uh, it's so the naming itself is, uh, so uh, we call it, Beyond 5G, 5G advanced, 6G. Uh, we we can call uh, uh, the naming has various uh, patterns uh, so far. The most important uh, uh, item is the technologies which can which is uh, shown that that it is effective. That technology should be incorporated, incorporated, deployed uh, as soon as possible in order uh, to meet or provide more values. So, uh, mobile network is uh, developing, evolving in the uh, continuously. So, and uh, by evolving continuously. Uh, more network, new new services will be uh, uh, coming. For example, for example, in five G air, uh, maybe XR, VR, AR, or something like metaverse, or something new uh, use cases will be more uh, uh, more more uh, easy to use if five G is uh, in 5G capability is uh, increased. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tanisan. I think mm -hmm. uh, we are now uh, at the end of this uh, time allocated for the Q&A. And I'd like now to hand it back to Alessia for the Wisdom Corner. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fidel, for moderating uh, the session. And thank you, Mr. Tani, for your very clear and interesting presentation. So we can now move to the Wisdom Corner, Live Life Lessons, which is based upon the idea to give a unique and special angle to this new webinar series, uh, adding a personal touch.
So Mr. Tani will guide students and young scholars in the field of current ICT research, and will also share some of his uh, impactful life lessons. So Mr. Tani, I will start with, with my first question, which is your hard earned life lessons that you would like to share with us today that might help somebody attending this webinar? Okay, thank you very much for your uh, question. Uh, hard earned life lesson, right? Which I would like to share. When a new challenge arrives for uh, me, for you, for all of you, uh, you see it as a good opportunity. For example, uh, for me, uh, I have a lot of uh, experience. I have this, uh, uh, this threshold of my biography, which will be, which was already introduced, but yeah. Before current, before, uh, before uh, I was involved in the current job, I have been involved with the IoT business department for 60, 60 years. It was very challenging assignment for me, but I think it is a good, good opportunity for me to develop our career, develop our knowledge, develop uh, develop my career, develop my knowledge, develop my capabilities. It's very important to identify new value that could come out of the new opportunities and create um, and uh, create an um, uh, uh, empathetic story. Empathetic story also involve my part, our partner, your partner, define where you stand and engage very positively, very positively. So, and uh, uh, one example uh, at the current job, I talked about the open run initiative, ORAN uh, activities. Being involved in ORAN international expansion has been a very, very good learning experience and very, very uh, challenging activities. But it can provide me more capabilities, more value, more perspective. Originally, uh, originally uh, in seeking new business opportunities while advancing standardization to promote ORAM based on the idea that overseas expansion using open RAM of which Docomo has various know-how may lead to the new businesses. And we define the value, Docomo, uh, yeah, we define the value that overseas expansion of RAM brings to operators, overseas operators. We, Docomo, and uh, we have created, Docomo has uh, created a development story for this purpose, proceed with the negotiation with our partners, which can be a very good learning experience. It's very important to remember that you always have a clear goal that you want to achieve. As a result, I believe we can learn very uh, impressive lesson. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have another question. Um, okay. in, in which field and then which topics you would you recommend students to study, perhaps uh, highlighting uh, emerging technologies or, or trends in the ICT that you believe uh, uh, they are particularly promising for future research? Mm. Yeah, good question. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, it depends on what areas you are interested in and how you can 
how you how you plan your career. If you do not define the skills involved in the area you are interested in, you will not acquire them. Based on the structure and the challenges of the area, you will need to consider what uh, technologies, what areas, what industry, what yeah, what areas should be taken, and the ICT technologies necessary for that uh, purposes. For, for example, in my case, uh, I mentioned about Open Run, uh, uh, which I, yeah, and by uh, by studying the technologies necessary for that purpose, I ex examine the evolution of general purpose hardware technologies, related virtualization, integration technologies, wireless technologies, and other necessary technologies, and then uh, uh, very much studied those technologies. Recently, yeah, recently, I have been interested in cultivating new communication style, new communication style in the future, which will be realized in the world of Web3, Web3 world. And I believe the communication style will be changing in the future when the Web3 era. Not just just not only uh, no, just not only uh, mobile technology is uh, uh, evolution, but also yeah, Web3 technology will be changing. Will 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 be change our communication style. That's why I am studying the uh, basic technologies, nature of what is Web3, blockchain related technologies, and uh, related platform technologies. So always. We have to set the main goal stream. Yeah, that's very important, I believe. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I have another question that is probably um, a question you have already heard in other events. Uh, how will, in your opinion, uh, chat GPT impact <laughs> the future of research, but also everyone's life in general? What is your opinion? Okay, thank you very much. Maybe you can ask Chat GPT to that on that on that I know, question. But uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, I think that people's creativity becomes more important. Creativity, you know, uh, the nature essence of Chat GPT is that collecting and organizing information. That is already out there and uh, which is uh, and also that not need to be done by humans right but only humans can think of new creativity creative values and their stories that go into realizing those values it's very important to have creativity we can uh, by utilizing ChatGPT, chat GPT, we don't have to utilize the collecting or organizing the existing information. We have we are focusing only on the future creative activities. I believe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very last question. Um, we would like to know, how do you stay up to date with the latest advancements in research uh, in the ICT field? Is there any specific resources or journals uh, or conferences or maybe a book that you have read recently or communities uh, that you would recommend uh, students or young researchers to engage with? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, it is very important to first be clearly aware of the, of the areas you are uh, interested in, and then consider the appropriate news sources for these areas. Since I'm in a position to consider around the topics that we and also that will be useful to the business itself. Yeah, my responsibility is just not only future research, but also the practical development. 
that's why I have to take a look at their uh, various news, news, news sources. In my case, I keep track of the latest news mainly through uh, Nikkei news distribution. Nikkei means uh, Japanese economical uh, news sources uh, yeah, in Japan. And also uh, internationally, we, I, I'm looking at, the, for example, mobile world, mobile world live distribution news, news to get the mobile rated global trend. So it, it's, first of all, you have to, I believe, define the areas you are interested in and also you are focused, you, you direct focus on. Yeah, that's all. Thank all you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for adding this personal touch to our webinar series. I thank you greatly. I thank uh, my director, Onoe san. I thank the moderator, Pilar Jamusi, and I thank the editor in chief, uh, Professor Achilles. And so we'll, I hope you all enjoyed the, uh, this webinar. And oh, thank you. You're there, please. <laughs> I'll get your camera on. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants and uh, remind you that uh, we our next webinar will be uh, will be on the 27th of June, 5 p.m. Geneva time, uh, with uh, Dr. Choi, the chairman of Oran Alliance uh, and uh, vice president of uh, Deutsche Telekom Germany. And I give the floor to to my director or the, uh, Dr. Jamusi, if you would like to say. Uh, give some closing remarks uh, up to you. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> there was a final question perhaps on the chat uh, related to Onoe law. I don't know if you heard of Onoe's law, uh, Tanisan. It's about uh, the uh, even number generations are more successful, 2G, 4G, 6G. Uh, more than uh, odd numbers like 3G, 5G. What do you think about this law? <laughs> and uh, do you see the 5G deployment situation so far? How do you see it? Okay, very uh, difficult, difficult question in front of Onoe san. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I as as I mentioned before, 5G capability is uh, still improving, and uh, we are uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to make uh, more use cases by utilizing 5G. So uh, I believe that my job is to be successful for 5G. <laughs> But you know, the, this, this uh, row is uh, my second row. I have three rows. And uh, mm -hmm. more precisely, I started to say, uh, about this row for five years ago. At that time, many people in the University of Dogono and others are uh, focusing on the 5G. So many people didn't like this row. But now, <laughs> most people are engaged in the, involved in the 6G. So probably many uh, engineers, uh, um, most people like, like this for, for focusing on the 6G. That's the current situation. So, uh, but you should not give up to make 5G a great success. No, no, I, I didn't say that in failure, uh, just an average uh, success, average success. Uh, even number generation, or only even number generation becomes a great success. Uh, not a not a great success, but so <laughs> even numbers. So you should uh, continue the effort to make 5G a great success. That's my <laughs> comments from. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Onoe san Yes, uh, I yeah, my I I I, I have to be a, I mean the role that 5G should be more successful, successful, and also uh, at the same time. Uh, I am uh, responsible for uh, researching the 6D, er, 6D era. That's why we have to. I have to mm, be involved in the success of the both generation. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Good talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.